According to reports from the official Chinese media Xinhua News Agency, during the tomb-sweeping holiday in 2024, there were 1.19 billion person trips domestically, with tourists collectively spending 539.5 billion. This means an average expenditure of 453 yuan per person. As netizens put it, it's barely enough for a round trip, high-speed train ticket, or the entrance fee to a scenic spot. With very little left over for other expenses, it truly is budget travel. Netizens commented, The day for ancestors worship should be solemn, but unexpectedly, everyone is out having fun. People nowadays face so much pressure. Given a little free time, they go out no matter what day it is. According to official reports, during the tomb-sweeping holiday in Yangzhou, Jiangsu, three million tourists were received over three days, generating tourism revenue of 138 million yuan, with an average expenditure of just over 43 yuan, or $5.94 USD per person. This is Anhui. This is Nanjing, Jiangsu. This is Tianshui, Gansu. This is Luoyang, Henan. However, compared to crowding into tourist attractions and spending money, young people have taken budget travel to the extreme, seeking amusement without spending money, creating their own poor man's paradise. This has become the real highlight of this tomb-sweeping holiday, with even local cultural and tourism departments trying to capitalize on the trend. The world is so crazy. A seesaw called Chengdu Disney has become popular. It is no exaggeration to say that the economic value it has created for Chengdu in these two days is likely to be higher than that of Shanghai Disney. What started this was that a rapper called Nomi was unwilling to be eliminated from a talent show, so he recorded an abstract rap MV to respond to his mentor, Xie Di. One part of the video was recorded on the seesaw. It sounded very much like I want Disney, and it immediately became popular on the internet. Many young people rushed here to check in and sang loudly during the check-in process, making the surrounding residents miserable. I thought that the relevant departments in Chengdu would immediately stop it, but I didn't expect that they would lean into it instead. They not only set up entrances and exits in the community, they also organized a large number of volunteers to maintain order, and even provided tour guides. Now you can search it on the map. Some people think that this was a waste of public resources and a disturbance. But if you look at it from the perspective of the Chengdu Culture and Tourism Bureau, the seesaw's ability to attract money is comparable to Disney, and the number of people who have tried it is greater than those who drive the Xiaomi SU7. And there are no safety risks. It is certain that it will disturb people, but local residents can only tolerate it for the time being. After all, everyone is responsible for Chengdu's GDP. The term Chengdu Disneyland refers to a fitness equipment area located under a residential building in the Yulin Seven Alleys neighborhood of Chengdu. In his song taking aim at his mentor Xie Di, Nuomi says Xie Tian Xie Di, which translates to thank the heavens, but it is also a play on his mentor's name, Xie Di. The lyrics continue, thank the heavens, I want to diss you, which in Chinese sounds like thank the heavens, I want Disney. The shooting location of the song's music video was also jokingly referred to as Chengdu Disneyland. On April 5, 2024, the topic Chengdu Disneyland trended on hot searches. As of 2 p.m. that day, the related topic had reached a reading volume of 43.6 million. On the same day, due to the excessive number of fans going to Chengdu Disneyland, Nuomi released a video on a social media platform expressing the hope that fans would not disturb the peace. On April 6, 2024, the Chengdu Disneyland Party Group Center was established overnight, setting up warning lines and signs on site with volunteers doing crowd control. This seemingly absurd scene has sparked a lot of discussion. So, how do local residents view it? The source of the voice in this video is a Chengdu citizen. He said, It was so lively a few days ago that the flowers were trampled to pieces, but now it's silent. We old people can't understand it anymore, so we think it was a way to vent their anger, and it was just for fun anyway. Young people get angry for a while, and then it passes. The video shows that this Chengdu Disneyland was deserted within a few days. This free attraction, created by a group of young people, of course cannot be compared with the economic value of Disneyland. Whether it can truly contribute to the local GDP is uncertain. However, the swift action of the Chengdu Cultural and Tourism Department is more embarrassing than that of the young people frolicking on the seesaw. Even local governments depend on internet hype. In hip-hop culture, dis means an attack or insult. In the context of the Chinese internet language, 
it implies disdain or contempt. If we look at the context alone, dis actually means the same as the Chinese word dui, which means to confront or challenge. However, nowadays, besides dui, terms like attack, argument, conflict, disdain, mockery, and criticism have almost all been replaced by dis. These young people, gathering around a seesaw, collectively indulging in a rapper's diss joke, their seemingly bored, nonsensical, and incomprehensible behavior, what emotions are they venting? Some netizens commented, This is unemployed people releasing life pressure. It feels like an outlet for social contradictions. Doesn't seem funny at all. It's actually quite sad. They're under so much pressure. Young people nowadays, how bored they must be. How much pressure they're under. Even a small thing becomes a venting outlet. Maybe it's an expression of dissatisfaction with certain authority, and this equipment provides a channel. Another attraction created by young people is Hua Chang Bay in Shenzhen. The counterfeit capital and China's first electronic city became a popular tourist attraction during this tomb sweep holiday. Unlike backpackers before, many young people come here not to shop but to enjoy a variety of activities. Since the popularity of City Walk, famous attractions in Hua Chang Bay include trendy cafes, Cantonese cuisine, museums, electronic markets, snack streets, and beauty stores. Last year, City Walk became a hit, and Hua Chang Bay also got on the bandwagon, turning into a digital version of a poor man's paradise for young people to explore. There are 440,000 travel guides for Hua Chang Bay on social media platform Xiaohongshu. Some travel agencies even offer one-day tours of Hua Chang Bay, and the Shenzhen government has provided recommended routes for Hua Chang Bay City Walk. Hua Chang Bay City Walk experience is divided into three levels. The basic level focuses on relaxation. Young people include Hua Chang Bay in their City Walk itinerary alongside Bijia Mountain and Lotus Mountain just to experience the atmosphere. They take a stroll in the Central Garden, treat the electronic malls of Hua Chang Bay like regular shopping centers, and then explore various trendy restaurants to enjoy Shenzhen cuisine. Retail clerks say that about 60% of visitors on weekends and holidays come here to stroll, while only 40% make purchases. This type of experience suits locals in Shenzhen well, and many young couples consider it a good spot for dates. A more advanced level involves treating Hua Chang Bay as an electronic supermarket. Some young people come to Shenzhen as a cheap vacation, so they combine Hua Chang Bay with Shui Bay, a hub for gold and jewelry. After City Walk, they boast about their bargains in Hua Chang Bay on social media. Today's Hua Chang Bay, compared to its past as a pure top electronic city, is more like a giant offline Pain Duo Duo because of its flea market prices. As long as you're willing to explore, you can always find lower prices. The most popular items among girls are the phone cases at SEG Electronics Market. Many retail stores are filled with the trendiest phone cases, phone straps, and phone holders, all priced at less than 10 yuan. Many girls buy a dozen phone cases at a time. Hua Chang Bay is also a paradise for tech enthusiasts on a budget. There are watch straps for 8 yuan, wireless power banks, 3 for 100 yuan, which even come with data cables. There are smartwatches capable of running Douyin, hair dryers resembling Dyson's for just over 100 yuan, and headphones rivaling Sony's or Apple's for less than 100 yuan. It is said that the trendiest bag in Hua Chang Bay is a black plastic bag. Just carry it as if you're shopping, and you can negotiate for even better deals. In Hua Chang Bay's monetary system, every penny can be maximized in value. So they say no one can leave Hua Chang Bay empty-handed. Some have unlocked an upgraded version of Hua Chang Bay City Walk, a one-day deep dive into Hua Chang Bay. For the guys, start by buying a phone at Yuanwang Digital Mall, then play around with a CCD camera at Modern Window Building, and in the evening, hit up the ghost market in Hua Chang Bay to hunt for watches. For the girls, after enjoying coffee and pig trotter rice in Hua Chang Bay, head to SEG Electronics Market to pick out phone cases, pass by Zijingcheng for some imported snacks, then explore Mingtong Digital City for cosmetics. In the evening, go to the ghost market to hunt for luxury bags. The famous ghost market in Hua Chang Bay supposedly starts setting up stalls at 8 p.m and closes at 4 a.m. The market is filled with counterfeit world-famous watches and luxury bags. Today I went to Shenzhen Hua Chang Bei Gui Market to buy some high-end goods. There are the same models of various Rolex Submariners and the same models of Audemars Piguet. The asking price is only 280 yuan, and they are all the best one-to-one -one replicas. There are LV bags in various styles, all placed on the same table, and the price is only three digits. There is also a Dyson hairdryer, which costs only one twentieth of the same model, and the same Gucci Eau de Toilette. 
This man said his girlfriend even found a necklace identical to the one she had, which was selling for 18,000 yuan at the official store, but here it was only 138 yuan. In the video, the man holds up arms wearing fake watches, saying, Welcome to the counterfeit heaven, Huachangbei Ghost Market. Countless rags to riches stories have been born here due to its incredibly high imitation technology. It's crowded every day, with countless dream chasers making their fortune here. This is Huachangbei in Shenzhen in 2008. At that time, the commercial street was not strictly a pedestrian street and vehicles could pass through. However, this was the most headache-inducing route for taxi drivers because it was always packed with people, making it the most congested road in all of Shenzhen. Huachangbei is known as China's top electronic street. At its peak, Huachangbei had over 1 million visitors daily. Backpackers from all over the country roamed its streets, and every nook and cranny was bustling with people. Back then, it was difficult to find a rental space in SEG Plaza for less than 80,000 yuan per square meter, because even a small booth would attract over 100,000 visitors daily. Behind the bustling scenes of Hua Changbei lies a complex underworld. Counterfeit goods abound here, earning it the reputation of being a counterfeit heaven. In 2003, factories in Hua Changbei were capable of manufacturing radios, MP3 players, and nearly all daily electronic products. However, when faced with high-tech barriers like mobile phones, they faltered. It was in that year that Taiwan's MediaTek launched a single-chip solution for mobile phones. With this chip, manufacturers could simply add a battery and a casing to start mass-producing phones. With a complete and perfect electronic industry chain, Hua Changbei ushered in its craziest era. Through Hong Kong, countless smuggled and counterfeit goods flooded into Hua Changbei. These phones, lacking branding and manufacturer labels, only had the letters SZ printed on them, hence the origin of the term Shanjai, meaning imitation. Hua Changbei also earned its notoriety as a center for counterfeit goods. Later on, many foreign companies explicitly prohibited products bearing the name Shenzhen or Hua Changbei. Investigative journalists swarmed to Hua Changbei, exposing the dark secrets of the counterfeit industry chain. Every year during the March 15th Consumer Rights Day, Hua Changbei was always on the list. Shanjai had become an unspoken secret among Shenzhen residents. In 2007, under public pressure, the leadership of Shenzhen launched a large-scale cleanup operation. In 2011, the era of Shanjai phones in Hua Changbei reached its final glory and demise. That day, in Manhattan Digital Plaza, nearly a thousand counterfeit Apple and Nokia phones were thrown from the 18th floor. That year, the Shanghai Empire of Hua Changbei saw countless businessmen, bosses, and factory owners in the gray market go bankrupt, into debt, and even commit suicide. It was said at that time, when the Shanghai dragon vein was broken, unable to transform, Hua Changbei died. In 2013, the government closed roads and renovated in Hua Changbei. Four years later, it became a commercial pedestrian street, but the prosperity of the past was no more. Some say that the renovation of Hua Changbei destroyed its feng shui, leading to the loss of its former glory. <laughs> empty, empty, empty. The digital city that was once too crowded to get into is now an empty city. These shops are unoccupied. I'm in Hua Changbei, the largest wholesale market in China. This is Zhenhua Digital City, which was once a popular shopping mall. Many business owners came to Hua Changbei, but they couldn't even get the transfer fee of 1 million yuan. Now it has become a ghost town. In order to shed the label of Shanjai, Hua Changbei began to transform. Mingtong Electric Electronics Building was the first mall to undergo transformation. Due to the worsening electronic market caused by the pandemic, business owners who used to produce domestic Shanghai phones began to venture into cosmetics using their original supply chains and operational models. Products from brands like Dior and Chanel were sold at only 50 to 60 percent of their official prices, leading to a booming business. Seeing these people making money, 80 percent of the merchants switched to selling cosmetics, and the mall was renamed Mingtong Cosmetics Market. During its peak, it was as lively as the duty-free shops in Japan and South Korea. However, just like electronic products back then, the cosmetics market also became deeply entangled in the quagmire of counterfeit goods. And the prosperity of the ghost market meant that Hua Changbei still couldn't shake off the title of counterfeit heaven. With the introduction of CityWalk, Hua Changbei joined the tourism industry's competition frenzy. Not only did it transform the former paradise for tech enthusiasts into a women's sanctuary, but it also ventured into the snack business. Zijingcheng Food Trading Center specializes in selling snacks from around the world, including popular internet-famous snacks. For example, at the Tokyo station in the mall, you can find most of the must-buy souvenirs for tourists, such as the White Lover Cookies and the Potato Chips Trio, all at surprisingly low prices, easily outmatching various snack discount stores. By combining electronics, cosmetics, and snacks, Hua Changbei has something for everyone, young and old, male and female. 
old-fashioned streets have become popular spots for social media check-ins, while other tourist spots are selling services. Central Park, located in the prime location of Futian District, offers a 24-hour open-air gym. With each piece of equipment bearing instructions and usage guidelines, even providing parasols to avoid sun exposure, other tourist spots have their iconic check-in points, and Hua Chiang Bay follows suit with whatever is trending. There are iconic road signs found in over 20 cities worldwide, and Hua Chiang Bay has them too. Landmark cafes that are must-haves at various tourist attractions are also found in Hua Chiang Bay. Hua Chiang Bay's pedestrian street even has a batch of pianos for people to play for free, attracting many visitors every day, including. Social media influencers who come specifically to check in. Even the Hua Chiang Bay Museum has designed many check-in spots, offering picturesque angles for smartphone cyberpunk masterpieces. When the song "Flowers in Full Bloom" went viral, Hua Chiang Bay dubbed itself as Shenzhen's own Yellow River Road. Whether it's transitioning to selling cosmetics and snacks or the government leading the way with City Walk, it's all about reviving Hua Chiang Bay's past glory. But can the long-forgotten Hua Chiang Bay rise again through tourism? Can it truly shake off the label of counterfeit? Not long ago, when Apple entered the mixed reality market, genuine products were scarce and expensive, with some channels charging five figures for procurement fees. In no time, knockoff products named Apple Core were already on display in Hua Chiang Bay stalls, priced much lower than the genuine ones. Despite these. Astonishing Hua Chiang Bay speed, the quality and market effect of these knockoffs are far from comparable to the genuine products. Perhaps Shanghai is a fate that Hua Chiang Bay is destined to endure forever. Now, not only Chengdu and Shenzhen are banking on cultural tourism. During holidays, many localities around China spare no effort to attract tourists. But does this truly contribute to GDP growth? There is no country in the world that relies on tourism to revitalize its economy. The stimulus of tourism. To GDP is very low. If you look at Zibo Barbecue and Harbin Tourism, they actually did little to help the local economy because the tourism industry chain was very short. You go on a trip, stay in a hotel, and have meals. There are only two groups of people making money from you. What's the use? The reason why the automobile industry is so important and the real estate industry is so important. Is because the automobile industry can make money by making wheels, steering wheels, and car seats. And then, in terms of their upstream raw material supply, those who make equipment can make money, and those who make steel can make money. Rubber suppliers can make money, mining can make money, and its industry chain is very long. The same goes for real estate, which involves 17 major industrial chains such as home furnishings, home appliances, steel and cement, etc. So, in the end, you buy a house. But the entire chain causes a lot of consumption. Automobiles are the products with the longest chain and the highest unit price that individuals can buy in the industrial field. So this industry has a great impact on GDP. The houses aren't selling, the cars aren't selling, factories are closing down, and brick-and-mortar stores are closing down. The whole economy has slowed down. And unemployed masses need an outlet, and that's going out to relax and have fun. The tolls on China's highways are usually quite high, but during holidays, in order to stimulate consumption, the highways are toll-free. So people choose to go on road trips when families are all off work, resulting in crowds every holiday. With the sluggish economy lacking bright spots, only holiday tourism can create an illusion of economic prosperity. Many trends have emerged. First, there's barbecue in Zibo, then southern potatoes in Harbin, followed by spicy hot pot in Tianshui. Tourism departments across the country are busy, but they're not making money. As netizens say, it's just about creating a superficial, lively atmosphere and finding a news angle to cheer oneself up. After the excitement, cars and houses will remain unsold.